Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to show you a test setup for transient voltage generation in a sort of home or office environment. And I'm going to use an SG1025 transient burst generator uh, for doing that. I'm also going to monitor it using a signal oscilloscope and I'm going to apply transients through a coupling clump as well. I'm going to demonstrate it in the lab at the University of Surrey, which is a safe environment for doing so. So let's get to it. What essentially a transient uh, voltage generator is, is a device that allows you to create the spikes that simulates disturbances on the power supply lines, which uh, could be applied to commercial equipment, which uh, is installed in residential areas, or it could be applied to industrial equipment in factories or at railways. And there will be different levels. So here, you can actually see the different settings of um, the NSG1025 uh, device. So basically we have different levels. So those are the levels you see on display. This is 500 volts, in, or in other words, 0.5 kilovolt. Then uh, you can increase it to one kilovolt. Then the level three would be two kilovolt. And finally, the level 4 will be 4 kV, and that's the maximum that this device can do. You can also change the polarity, and you can also do either a 50 Hz repetition spike, or a continuous burst, or also a single discharge, depending on uh, what you're trying to emulate. However, the standards uh, typically only specify the burst, and the 50 Hz repetition is not something that is prescribed by the standard. By the way, I'm talking about EN61000-4-5 standard for uh, voltage burst testing. And uh, you also will note that different levels are specified for different applications, such that the railway standard EN51-4 uh, will tell you to use IEC level 3 and uh, it will tell you that the performance criteria of the device on the test, which is going to be this display, has to be A, meaning that there should be no disturbances observable. Um, whereas residential requirements of EN55035 uh, will be slightly less stringent and they will only tell you to use up to uh, one kilovolt for transients and uh, two kilovolt for surges, but the performance criteria for either of those tests is going to be um, either B or C, meaning that the visible disturbance to the device is acceptable, however, it uh, must not uh, restart itself, or if it restarts itself, it should come back online automatically, which is the performance criteria C and does not require user input. So this is effectively all you need to know about test voltages. We also have a function to apply positive and negative polarity, which uh, is also important that you do that um, during the test. So uh, let's uh, create a test signal and have a look on the oscilloscope. I'm first going to create uh, one kilovolt uh, tone or signal, and I'm going to create it with a 50 hertz repetition. So I'm going to click this button, and I already connected this um, uh, cable for coaxial cable for monitoring. You can just about see it's uh, 100 to 1. So this is really important to make sure to check that so that your oscilloscope is protected. So then we can actually have a look on the display and we can see that uh, indeed we have those um, spikes and those spikes are separated. Uh, so if, you, if I zoom out, you'll, you're going to see more of them. 
eventually, maybe. So if I zoom in, I'm going to see them going quite fast and you can see that the distance between them is uh, pretty equal. Whereas if I select the other option, which is the burst mode, which we're actually going to test, we see that the pulses are now applied all the time and um, you see also that they're, uh, they're grouped in uh, spikes. So one spike is effectively uh, what is called burst. So and uh, inside this burst, you'll see many different ones. So we can have a look a little closer. This is effectively the closest I'm able to really get to. So this is what a single spike effectively looks like. It's a bit of a triangular shaped kind of uh, sudden sawtooth generator. Um, so yeah. And uh, you can see that uh, they are of a uh, very different height in uh, this example. And Probably that is due to the fact that uh, this device hasn't really been calibrated for quite some time. Um, so it's not exactly representative of the uh, laboratory test. However, it is kind of close enough for the um, kind of DIY test that you can do to verify that your product is actually likely to meet uh, the requirements of the standards. Whereas, um, obviously, you're not going to use this test uh, to sign uh, the certificate or the declaration of conformity. So, now that we uh, satisfied ourselves with um, these um, settings, let's um, apply them to the actual device on the test. And the first thing you're going to have to do is that you're going to switch the power on for the display that we're going to test. So basically what's happening here is that this display is powered from uh, the NSG1025 uh, transient uh, generator. So this is how it's able to apply the transients into the main supply. Now you have several options here. For, so you can see now that even though everything is aimed and ready to fire, I'm not actually um, applying any transients into the uh, power outlet yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying it to the conductors inside the socket. So I'm going to apply it first to live. And uh, now it's applying one kilovolt uh, spike between uh, live and earth and you can see there's not really any effect. Uh, then uh, we can also apply it to neutral and basically still no effect. And uh, finally we also apply it to the earth. So now effectively this is how you would normally do it um, according to 61.0-4-5 standard, is um, all of those three buttons will be turned on and you will be discharging the pulses in this kind of uh, shape into this device under test, which, as you can see, nothing's happening to it at the moment. So at one kilovolt, it is... a uh, passing quite well, which is uh, which makes sense because it's designed by Dell and um, it's designed to meet the residential specifications. We can also switch the polarity to negative and now you can see that uh, the spikes went uh, um, down, so they're below a zero volt. So this is what happens when you switch the polarity. Right.
there's a positive spikes and there's a negative spikes ish and uh, as you can see that also doesn't really phase uh, the display so that's uh, that's pretty good news after we've done testing transients on mains i'm going to disconnect this plug uh, or dut from this uh, device and instead i'm going to connect the capacitive clamp and so this is going to be um, this coupling unit uh, made by Schaffner Instruments. So let's uh, have a bit uh, better look into it. So the way the coupling clamp works, I'm gonna be careful not to scratch its way, um, is effectively this is the block diagram. So you have a kind of a, a coupling clamp um, in the middle and you have EUT1 and EUT2 which ideally should be completely decoupled from main supply, but uh, we're doing kind of lab test at the moment, not a, a full certification test, so we're not going to bother with that. And um, what you're gonna do, you're gonna put your interconnect cable in this space here, basically into this, um, between those plates, of the coupling clamp and it's uh, important to know that uh, I've seen people put cables like this and uh, then obviously that's not going to work very well so it's quite important that you open it and put the cable in the middle so that um, the discharge for the transient can be applied to it. And in this case, I'm going to use a, an HDMI cable, which I'm going to connect to my laptop on one side and uh, to the uh, display on the other. So now that the capacitive uh, clamp is uh, has a cable inside and the cable is connected to the DUT, um, all I need to do is power it up. Actually, I'm still going to use this uh, socket because I've run out of other sockets but I'm going to um, turn off all of the main uh, surges whilst I'm doing it. So now I can power on the GUT and uh, apply the burst. So you can see that I'm applying 2 kilovolt positive polarity and uh, let's power on the GUT and see what happens now. So now you can finally see the ill effects of um, transients uh, on the display. So you can see how it's losing frames. Yeah. Like I said, this only happens uh, when this uh, voltage is really, really high. And uh, this is not uh, the commercial uh, spec that this product is designed to meet. Now I'm testing to the railway specification and I'm applying um, these uh, transient voltages through this uh, capacitive clamp into the HDMI cable. So it goes a little bit beyond of uh, what the EN 55035 asks for. So obviously this isn't a problem for the residential spec of EN 55035 that this display has actually been designed to meet. So as I showed you, it meets it quite well. But when we test to the industrial level or the railway, or specification of EN5121-4 railway standard, then we can see that this product 
is not going to meet uh, the requirements of this standard because what we're seeing here is a performance criteria B. And what we need is the performance criteria A. I can elaborate a little bit more on the performance criteria. So now we have a good example. Whereas the performance criteria is obviously no change in uh, the state or the functionality of the device whatsoever. Whereas performance criteria B is exactly what we're seeing here. And uh, there is uh, some change. However, it doesn't affect the main function of the device as it continues to work. It doesn't restart itself. Then uh, we have performance criteria C. And that would mean that the device actually restarts itself, but um, comes back automatically. And finally, we have the performance criteria D, which means that the device restarts itself and requires manual input from the operator, from the test operator, to start it again. Actually, there is one more, but that's not a performance criteria, and that is E, basically means the device is destroyed and cannot be used anymore. So it got broken during test. So those are the performance criteria that are specified inside EN6100-4-5. However, that standard does not tell you which one to pick. So if you want to pick a specific one, you need to refer to uh, application standards such as the aforementioned 511-4 or 55-35. Uh, By the way, the size generator would be uh, very similar to the transient voltage generator except the pulses that are applied in surge levels will be a little bit longer and uh, I believe the standard for the surge generation is EN yeah, 61000 4 4. Um, then um, basically you will be doing the exact same thing, but it takes a lot longer. So for uh, the kind of DIY quick uh, compliance check, I would suggest you only apply transient tests uh, because it takes less time and um, 99% when you pass a transient test, you're also going to pass the surge test because the levels are effectively the same. Um, the only difference is the uh, time. So that's about as much as I wanted to cover in this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed this practical um, insight into the EMC testing in um, some sort of a laboratory or DIY settings. And uh, uh, please like and subscribe the video. I appreciate you and hope you enjoy the channel and I'll see you in the next video very soon.